What's happening everybody? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Sync 4 media screen inside of the 2022 Super Duty. Now this is the Sync 4 screen that's standard in the Lariat and above. If you're in the XL or the XLT, it's going to be the Sync 3 screen that you found in the 2021 model. So I do have a few videos as well, so drop down below if you want one specifically on the Sync 3 system. But the basic look and layout and things like that, you will have some similar functionality. But let's dive into it. Let's figure out exactly what's going on with this screen, figure out how to set up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and all that other fun stuff. Now, this is the Sync 4 media screen that is going to be standard inside of the Lariat version and above for the vehicle. Now in the lower trims, it's going to be the older Sync 3 screen, which the big difference, like it does visually look very different. Very similar functionality though. The big difference between Sync 3 versus Sync 4 is going to be Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we do actually have wireless settings there as well now. So you can connect wirelessly through Android Auto or CarPlay, which is great because if you had the option for the console with wireless charging, you could wirelessly charge while you're wirelessly connected. But a lot of the same things will be carried across from both systems. So going through some of the basics on the audio tab there, we have our sources all in the very top. So we can change between AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up there as an option. If our cell phone was connected, that would show up as an option. We can easily connect to Bluetooth audio. We can switch between different sources there as well. We can change between songs, stations, etc. We could direct tune this way if we wanted to. So simply enter a station, we can do that. That's probably the least effective method because we can press the command prompt on the steering wheel and we can change radio stations that way as well. Along the bottom, we do have some added sound settings. So as you can see, we've got our tone settings. So we can look at things like treble mid-range bass. We've got our balance and fade there as well. So we can literally figure out the positioning of the sound where it's gonna be focused on. We can reset it to bring it back to our default instead. And actually, let's go up one part in volume there. So we won't constantly get that screen. We've got our speed compensated volume. So will the volume automatically raise or lower depending on the speed of the vehicle? And then we've got our sound mode. So we've either, either got stereo or our, our surround sound mode. So a few different options there. Moving back, that brings us back to this main screen. Now, one of the interesting things, if we go to one of our Sirius XM stations, we've got a ton of other options. We've got our notifications there if we want to. So we can add in, so notifications for either if we wanted the song or the artist, which is great. We can manage our notifications for the individual artists as well. If we had multiple people on the vehicle, so we could literally create a listener if we wanted to. And we've got some advanced Sirius XM settings. So we've got some more sound settings. So same idea what we saw earlier in the audio, that's gonna be the same, but we've got our subscription info. We've got our favorites, so we can edit out our favorite stations if we wanted to. We can look at our listening history, look at individual settings. So if we wanted to block explicit content, reset our history, we've got our preset pages there as well. And that's gonna be the same for AM FM. So it's gonna kind of bulk everything together. I'll show you what I mean. So with six preset pages, we now have 30 individual presets that we've got there. So it is a mix obviously of AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc. So if you're a heavy audio listener, you've got a ton of different options that are available there. And that's gonna be the basics of the actual audio system there. As I mentioned, we've got a few different options. We can browse this way. We can just browse through our steering wheel there to switch between presets. We can literally do a press and hold there as well if we wanted to change the stations out that way instead. Moving down, we do have our phone along the very bottom there. As you can see there, so we've got our phone and that pushes our audio along the side. So we can adjust and move to different settings there if we wanted to. It's kind of neat because if we're on one of these other settings, we could swipe it to bring it back to that setting instead. But looking at phone to start, so as of right now, no phones are currently connected and it's super straightforward in order to set a phone up. So first step, what we're gonna do is just hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and F250 is all we're waiting for there. So we're just gonna hit F250. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? Yes, we do. And it'll take a second there. And we are connected. So pairing is successful. Literally that safety, simple. Please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Thanks, car. And we've got our 911 assist there. So I always recommend turning 911 assist on. The big reason why is because if your phone's connected and you're in an accident, it's automatically gonna die on 911 for us. Nine, and there we go, so we're connected there. Next up, on my phone. Ah, there we go, that's what I was waiting for. So it asked me if I wanted to allow CarPlay with the F250. We wanna use CarPlay, and so it supports CarPlay, so we just need to enable that first. And in a few seconds, Three, two, one, and we are fully connected. 
literally that simple to be able to do it. And as you can see there, stretch it across, we've got R, Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, and we've got Waze. So we do technically have factory navigation, but if you wanted to use this screen instead, you could absolutely do that. So you do have some options there. We can jump back, and as you can see there, we do have a few different things. So we do have, back to the side, so LiveX Live is a radio app, so we could play that through CarPlay if we wanted to. But if we look through our app screen, we've got a series of other things that are available here now as well. So we've got LiveX Live, which because I'm connected through CarPlay, that's not going to show up as a clickable option. But if CarPlay was disabled, I would be able to connect through that app specifically over Bluetooth. Jumping back into CarPlay does exactly that, so it launches us back in. And then on our phone, if we go into general settings, we jump into CarPlay, we can find the EF250, we can customize it, and we can literally do a drag and drop. So if you want to listen to your audiobooks and podcasts, we can easily adjust that dynamically. If we've deleted something accidentally, it moves to the very bottom of the screen. And we can also do a reset in order to bring this back to our factory default screen there instead. And then pushing this button is going to launch us back into this main screen instead. So we do have some flexibility there, and it literally is that simple setting up Apple CarPlay inside of this vehicle. All right, now setting up Android Auto is literally the exact same process. So firstly, because I'm still connected to CarPlay, what we're going to do is just jump into phone list there, and that's going to bring us back to this main list. If you're on one of the other pages, etc., we just go into settings. We've got our phone list, and that's going to bring us up to this setting now. We've got my phone that's currently connected, so we can click on that. So we've got a different, couple different connection options, so we can disable CarPlay. We can connect our Bluetooth audio if we want to. We can jump into my phone settings. So as you can see there, we've got a series of different options. We can't adjust any of these settings because I'm connected to CarPlay. So if we disable CarPlay for a second, we're going to connect to Bluetooth Media. So we're connected there, clicking inside. And as you can see there, we've got my phone settings now, and we've got a series of different options there. So we've got contacts, text messaging, roaming warnings, and a number of other things. But setting up Android Auto. So now that we are connected, we can set up Android devices very simply. We're just going to add Search a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And very similar to what we saw, we're just going to search for, there we go, F250. Once it shows up, we're just going to click on that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, and they are currently paired up. Do we want For to your safety, us? please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Thanks, car. All right, now what we have to do is just enable Android Auto there as well. Let's all access to messages. And we are connected there. And look at this, Android Auto is set up all at the same time. So we can literally just continue through if we want to. We can exit out if we don't want to set up Android Auto just yet. But the phone is fully connected. So if we continue on through Android Auto, so we just continue. And look at this, fully connected, literally that simple. So as you can see there, we do have our basics. We can search easily that way if we wanted to. We've got our Google Maps settings there, so we can literally adjust what's going on there. We've got our traffic settings, guidance, etc. We've got our notification center and our Google Assistant. And that's actually something I didn't show you in the Apple side, but because we're connected through Android Auto, if we were connected through either Android or Apple CarPlay, we can press and hold this on the steering wheel, and then it's gonna pull up our Google Assistant instead. We could do that, or on the Google side, or if we had it set up on our Apple side as well, we could say things like, hey Google, and that's gonna pull up our assistant there as well. We can hop inside here in order to be able to jump back to this main screen. We do have the flexibility of being able to customize this like what we did on the iPhone side of things, but doing it, we don't have as much customization options. So if we search for Android Auto, we go to our Android Auto settings, we've got previously connected cars, we can customize the launcher, and we can literally just kind of do a drag and drop in order to be able to adjust. But whatever we change here, we actually have to relaunch Android Auto for the settings to take into effect. It's not going to dynamically update the same way that it would on the Apple side of things, but we still technically could customize. Moving back, we've got our Google detection there, day nighttime mode for maps, we can start Android Auto while the phone is locked, and we've got a few other options there as well. So we could kind of disable and we can adjust things as necessary as we'd like to here. And as you can see, fully connected through Android Auto, jumping back into either the phone list at the top there. So we've got both phones connected. Clicking through to the Galaxy, we've got Android Auto, which could easily be disabled. We can connect back to Bluetooth Audio instead if we wanted to, which means it'll temporarily disable Android Auto. As you can see there, so we're connected to our Bluetooth media and not to Android Auto, so we can easily adjust that as necessary. We can jump into our phone settings, and if you've got multiple devices, this is where we're going to go to set this thing up as a favorite phone if we wanted to. So if both phones were, were recognized, it's which one gets connection priority? We can manage our contacts, and we've got a number of other options like what we saw on the iPhone side. 
Now, if we ever wanted to delete a phone, it's actually super straightforward. So along the very top, we've got a little trash icon and we just delete that way. The phone is disconnected and it's completely removed. Same idea with this phone, so we can connect and disconnect. So we're gonna delete, yes. And both phones are now fully disconnected. We go back into phone, nothing's connected and it literally is that simple to be able to set up a phone inside of this vehicle. All right, next up, we've got navigation, and this means that we do have factory navigation. We do have a few different options that are available for the navigation. We've got connected services, which means that we would get live weather, traffic alerts, and things like that. You could technically just use the Waze app instead on your cell phone in order to get that, but we do at least have this as an option there as well. We can easily look at our menu button along the very top, so we can look at our map orientation, and we can adjust whether it's 2D, 3D, etc. Moving back, we've got our voice options there. So as we come up to an upcoming turn, etc., do we want it to be a voice and tone, strictly a voice or strictly a tone, letting us know of an upcoming turn? Traffic on the map, do we want to show that, yes or no? We can avoid certain things. So if we want to avoid toll roads, highways, tunnels, ferries, etc., we can easily do that. We can show on map, so we can show some certain things. So if we want to show point of interest icons like ATMs, parking, hotels, etc., we can do that weather and we've also got more setting options so we've got some routing and map preferences which means that we can reroute to avoid certain traffic we can look at a 3d map there instead so 3d options we've got our fastest or the most eco-friendly route and then we've got breadcrumbs so think of breadcrumbs like hansel and gretel so as we go back to the map whatever areas we go to it's literally going to leave a little drop letting us know that we've gone to that area so useful if you're going kind of like off-roading rugged terrain etc and you want to make sure you're kind of taking the same route back as you go Moving back inside, that's gonna be the basics of the navigation settings there. We can easily search for addresses. So we can easily start typing in an address there and we just give it a second as we type and it's gonna be predictive. So we give it a sec, three, two, and there we go. So as you can see, it's given us a few options there. We can easily select one of these options as well. And we've got options now. So if there was a phone number available, it would call through. We can also save it as a favorite if we wanted to and we can look at some different route options. So we can look at a few different route choices. So we do have the option there of doing that. We can select whichever one we want to easily. And then we just press the okay, start button traffic there. traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted road. Perfect. All right, so as you can see there, we are connected. Along the right side is our indicator. So how far or how close are we away from completing the route? We can stretch the map out across the entire side there. And pretty cool, like I kind of actually love the fact we've got that option. We can add in certain things. We can change up the route there as well if we wanted to. So we review, we can mute this thing out or we can completely cancel the route if we wanted to. We can search a few other different ways. So now that we've looked at an address recently, we can go back to that address that we've looked at. We can save certain things. We can look at food attractions we can search by GPS coordinates as well. So if we enter in coordinates there, we can do that. Different options for our keyboard, different settings there. And we've got different keyboard languages as well. We do have a favorite button along the very bottom. So we can literally create this favorite button to more or less do what we'd like it to do. So we do have a few different options as to what's showing up there. So if we wanted to set this favorite button up so that when we press it, it changes between the audio sources, look at that. So now it's our audio sources. So if we click off and we click on this one, we can change between our different audio sources now. We press again to edit it and we can go to different options instead. So we wanna have that for vehicle settings instead. As you can see, we've got our vehicle button there. So we press vehicle settings, jumps us into our vehicle settings, press and press in order to be able to edit it out if we want one of these other options instead. So we can kind of customize what's showing up there. Next up will be our app settings. So we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay there. Currently not connected, so Search we would your vehicle on your. So there we go. So as you can see, it brings us back to our phone list as well. So pretty straightforward there. Moving into our settings now, so a ton of other options. We've actually seen these settings already when we're in the audio tab, so we do have a few different options, and this is going to look dynamic. Because we're on a Sirius XM station, if we actually go to an AM or FM, go to our settings again, we're back to our radio defaults, which same thing, we've seen this before as well. Moving back, we can easily add a phone in there. So we can add a phone here, we can add a phone in there, tons of different places. We've got our sync navigation, so our factory nav, and those are our factory navigation options. Moving back, we've got some sound settings. So what we saw earlier under our audio, so we've got our tone, trouble mid-range bass, balance fade, etc. Some base vehicle settings, so our rear occupant alert. So if we go to drive and we turn the truck off, lets us know to check the rear seats. So we can turn that one on or off if we want to. So if you've got kids in the back, etc., just a nice little reminder to check the back seat as well. Some other vehicle settings, we've got a serial number, door keypad code we saw on the outside. So we've got a five digit number we can enter in. There's a default five digit factory one, and then you can add in more, one, uh, more codes if you wanted to. 
And then we've also got our rear view camera delay. So if we were shifting into reverse there, and then if we were to switch out to drive, whatever the case may be, it just kind of gives us a second before it's gonna turn that camera off. So it's a little bit of a delay there, which is, it's kind of a nice thing. So if you wanna make sure that, you know, you've got some things behind you, space behind you, et cetera. Moving back, series of other options. So we've got our clock down there. We can change between hours, minutes, etc. We can go into our military time instead and auto time update. So it's going to automatically update us based off of our GPS location. Moving back, we've got some general settings now. So we can change between English, Spanish, French, kilometers and miles, Celsius, Fahrenheit, the beep that we're getting there. If that drives you nuts, you can disable it if you want to. We've got our feedback and we can do a reset to either the Ford Pass app or our master reset. So we do have the flexibility of using the Ford Pass app to do things like you know, re remote start the vehicle. We can look at our current notification settings and things like that. If for whatever reason you need to remove people or if it's giving you any trouble, you can easily update it here if you wanted to. Or we can just do a master reset to bring the entire vehicle back to its factory default settings there instead. We do have some display settings. So as nice and as big and as beautiful as this display is, if you find it to be a little bit distracting, we can turn the display off if we want to completely. Button press to bring it to life. We can put it to a calming screen instead, which is just our date and time. Same idea, button press to bring it back to life again. We can adjust the brightness if we want to, so we can adjust the brightness this way very easily. Reset it to the default, and then we can change out the mode. So as of right now, so it's in auto, but it's showing us this is the daytime mode. We can lock it out to permanently be the day. We can permanently lock it out to this nighttime mode instead or we can have the vehicle determine if it's going to be the daytime or the nighttime mode, and that's just based off of how bright it is outside. Moving back, and next screen over, we've got our Ford Assistant. So we've got the flexibility of having the vehicle listen to wake words. So rather than pressing the command prompt on the steering wheel, which if we do that, that's great, we can have it listen to different wake words. So we set up a different word, whatever is gonna show up there, and then I want you to listen to something for a sec. Okay, Ford. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. So it's kind of neat because we can now go completely button free in order to be able to change stations. We can do things as well, like navigate using our voice, make phone calls and things like that. We can set up a preferred wake word. Advance mode means that we won't get as many notifications. Phone confirmation. Do you want to call such and such person? Yes or no. Our command list when we say OK Ford or we press the button on the steering wheel. This is going to pop up. So this is the command list. That one can show up. Yes or no. And then moving back, connectivity and vehicle hotspot. So connectivity, definitely recommend making sure that you connect to a Wi-Fi network at home. You could technically just get a data only plan through your cell phone provider as well if you wanted to and use the vehicle as a hotspot. But one of the cool things is that if you go connect to Wi-Fi at home, you could also turn on automatic updates, so system updates, which means that when you're at home, you can schedule the updates. And if there's an update available, it's automatically gonna update the vehicle for you. So it's definitely a useful setting there. Then as I mentioned, the vehicle does have a built-in modem, so you can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. You do need a data-only plan in order to be able to access that feature, but it is available there as an option. We've got a few different things there. So as you can see, we've got data usage. We can look at different settings there as well. So we can literally set up what our name is for our network and a few other things. We've got the option of managing connected devices, and we can get some help if we need it. We've got some mobile apps as well. So certain apps will only work through USB and that's specifically, as you can see there on the Android Auto side, so certain apps you will have to be connected through Android Auto wired in order to get some of them to work. Back again, we've got our system update screen, which we already saw that one earlier. And then we've got a digital owner's manual. So if you're getting any weird messages on the dash, you're not really sure what lights mean, et cetera. You wanna know about break-in periods, et cetera. We've got our owner's manual now. So fully digital there built into the screen, which means that we don't get a physical printed book anymore. If you wanted an actual owner's manual, you could actually go online to Ford's website and you can find it for your vehicle, whether that's a Super Duty, a Mustang, whatever the case may be, and you can easily print it out. We've got category views, visual searches, bookmarks, and a few other things, looking at a number of options that are available there. And moving back again into our 911 Assist, which we've already seen that one, so what's going to happen there? 911 Assist, if the phone's connected, vehicle senses a collision, it'll dial 911 for us. And we've also got our valet mode there, which we enter in a four digit number, and that's going to lock the screen out and the screen alone. So literally you enter in a four digit number and you can't look through anything. You won't be able to look at navigation, vehicle settings, things like that, until you enter that four digit number again. And that's gonna be the basis of the actual Sync 4 media screen, with the exception of this thing. So we do have a little tray along the side there, which we can look in this up down view here if we want to, or we can press this page view instead. So we can kind of flip up and down and it is fairly responsive there, which is great. We can button press in order to bring certain things up, or we can fully swipe it across the side there in order to bring certain options up there as well. 
jumping back into the other tabs brings us back to this split screen there. And we do have some, some other options as you can see. We've got our, some base climate control settings there as well. But that's going to be the basics of that Sync 4 media screen. Well, that was a look at the Sync 4 media screen inside of the 22 Super Duty. What did you think? It's pretty neat, and like I said, the big difference between the Sync 3 and the Sync 4 is going to be the wired Android Auto Apple CarPlay, and in the Sync 4, you've got some more advanced voice control settings there as well. But if you run any problems, you need some clarification, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any problems that you may be having. But if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. Think about subscribing, and until I see you next time, take care. Our command list, when we say, OK, Ford. Our command list, when we say, OK, Ford, or we